All right, just wanted to take a second here to uh, wish everybody um, a safe day in the next couple days down in Florida. Hopefully you can stay safe and and not get too affected by the hurricane that's about to blast in. Um, I know nothing about that stuff because I don't live down there. I never have lived down there. But I know that a lot of times when the hurricanes hit, we get a remnant of it all the way up here into Michigan. So, And it can get quite windy and nasty. So that's got to just be a, just a absolute shit show down there when it hits. I couldn't even imagine. It's like what you'd see in the movies, but you're living it in real life. So I'm not usually one to swear on my channel, but, you know, at a certain point you got to kind of say what you got to say. So <laughs> this one might not be monetized, which isn't a big deal, but they probably would kick it because I'm saying swear words and they don't like that. So whatever. There's more important things in life than, you know, physical things and, and all that when it comes to devastating uh, mother nature. So hopefully everybody takes a second to think about people. You probably have friends or relatives or something down there. Um, just take a minute to keep them in your in your thoughts and stuff. So um, we're going to move on to this radio here. This is another pre-owned uh, long case QT60. It does have the typical, and I don't know why people do this, when you get these radios new, they give you these bump, bumpers. That's what I call them, bumpers. These go on the mounting bracket. They don't go on the radio. I don't know why people think that they stick them on the radio. They go on the bracket. That's what they're for. They're supposed to stick there. So I'm going to take some of the Goo Gone stuff they have and remove this. Get that gunk off there. These might still be usable. Um, you could always super glue them on the bracket. I'm going to try to stick them on the bracket before I... When I get done with this and box it up, the radio's in really nice shape. Um, it doesn't have really any gouges or scratches or anything like that. Um, it has been used, so you know we're selling it as used and all that stuff. So I just did the conversion. Whoever had it, they didn't convert it. Now there's a few marks on the side, so keep that in mind. It'll be priced fairly for a, a used radio with a good alignment i'm going to include one of the um let me grab one i'm going to include one of these with it so this will be included in the price for those that would need one of these this is the four pin cobra to uh standard rj45 with the radio so that'll be in there with the radio this is the this is the one in question here um i don't have a I don't have a PC programming cable just to include. If somebody wants to buy one, I do have them on my website. And you can obviously buy one with the order. Here's the back of it. It's not in overly bad shape or anything, so, you know. So there you have it. I'm going to go through and align this. First, let me grab the box and I'll show you what comes with it. So I have the mic. This is the normal mic that comes with the radio. I will be using it, so I'll put it back in the box when I'm done. Obviously, these, we'll try to put these on the bracket. Um, the bracket is here. It's in there, right there. Somebody put the stuff in a Ziploc baggie, so power cord is in there mounting stuff for the side mic bracket i don't know if that's the one that it came with or not um i see some knobs and stuff it looks like looks like pretty much everything is here not sure if there's a fuse in there or not let me check that yeah the fuse looks good so it's got the 10 amp fuse in it i put these on here if they don't stay on, um, it's because, you know, I pulled them off the side of the radio. You could always dab just a little, like bead a little super glue around the edges and use the bracket with, you know, then and it's not going to scratch the radio anymore. If you simply don't care about the side of the radio, then you can just take them off and just hook your bracket up or whatever. So if you're going to use this as a base, 
uh, just depends on how you would mount it. Some people don't even mount them, they just set them on top of something and use an external speaker. Um, but the bracket looks good and everything, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in this baggie. So that'll be in there and I'll get everything situated here and we'll come back and show the radio. Alright, so here's the TX frequency of this radio. We're in the service mode, so I got this in one kilohertz resolution, so that's pretty darn good. Can't complain about that. Alright, now we're going to look at uh, FM power. So this one's about 39 and a half, so I'm going to turn that up to 50. Or somewhere around there anyways. I don't really recommend running it that much all the time, but I mean When you're on FM It's a consistent level of power and that power is strong that 50 watts is pretty strong You know, it's a lot different than AM so and the audio in my opinion The audio far surpasses any sound that you'll get on AM the audio is outstanding on on FM just has it has that fidelity and everything that the diehard AM guy wants on, out of AM you, you automatically get on FM it just sounds outstanding so <clears throat> I really wish that in the hobby um, more would embrace FM for CB and stop using like the lower frequencies just embrace it on channels 1 through 40 and obviously there needs to be like a collective agreement somehow of where, what area, because I mean we all know FM is kind of like you can use it anywhere on those channels, but we all kind of realize that on CB, 36 through 40 generally is always sideband, so you would probably piss some people off if you were, <clears throat> you know, using FM up there. So you'd have to find an area in the band where probably it would fit and work. And that would be for America. I don't know throughout the world. So, you know, certain countries have their own dedicated areas probably. But it's all new here. So, you know, but unfortunately I don't think too many are embracing it. Like I wish they would. Because the, the audio just sounds so much better. So now I'm doing the deviation on this one. I'm going to set it to 4.1. You know, it's, it came out of the factory about 3. It wasn't too bad. So, get it up there in a second, and there we go, so that's good, and I'll do AM, let's do the high power first, just come back over here and put this in uh, W, the little W, I set these to about 8. I haven't been on the radio at all today, so I don't know really what's going on out there, but I'll put this one on the air when I'm done and see see if we can't find something to talk to. Maybe go up on 10 meter again and try to do another uh, just radio contact with a 2 to 1 standing wave and whatever, but you can do it. You know, that's the thing. You can do it. So <clears throat> when I get my Mosley up there, it'll be different. Then I'll have a Intended design for those frequencies, and that would be quite a bit more enjoyable to be able to go up there and have a directional antenna that resonates. And then I can go on 12 on this radio, and obviously, there's no 15 on this radio, but <clears throat> can hook something else up and do 15 and 17 and 20. I think I'm going to do quite well with some DX on 20 when I get that up there because it's uh my tower is about 20 meters tall for the European guys that watch the channel so it should do well at 20 meters a 20 meter Yagi at, at 20 meter in the air um, and hopefully that will be the last change I ever have to make for my antenna setup for a long time this is AM I just don't really want to have everything tied up into one band like I have now. Okay, set that to 110%. 
And I'm going to go with an Antron 99 just for the 11 meter band and <clears throat> just have some fun on that. I'm not going to worry about the um, flat side and all that. If I can do the flat side on the Mosley with a compromise situation, then I'll do it. But if I can't, I can't. I don't really care that much. That was the low power modulation, by the way. It's the high power modulation, so it's pretty good already. And I'll start using my ham radio channel more when I get that mostly antenna up. Maybe when I build some of it, I'll do some videos or something, but... I don't really know how that'll go. Here's the... Here's the scope. I had it I had it triggered so that it wouldn't even show. That's looking really nice. Yep. Looks good. So that was nice and lined up right. Um we're getting about double our carrier on uh AM, which is about right for RMS. And then on peak, let's put it on that one. It's about 35, so that's about good too. So it's, it's coming along. Put this back in spectrum analyzer mode now. This is going to be the sideband test. This is where, you know, you definitely need to look at this. Bring up my two-tone there. Plug that back in, tell it I want it to run. Yeah, this is, this is where they get kind of dicey. <laughs> so that's how that looks right now. It kind of looks like a Frankenstein head or something, you know, with that. So I'll fix that up here in a minute, but we can see some of this stuff here. This is upper side, so. This thing's occupying a lot of bandwidth here. Let's put this in 10K. So each one is one kilohertz. So yeah, it's taking up a lot, a lot, way more bandwidth than it needs to. Let's just say that. So, you know, it doesn't mean you, you sound bad though. That's the thing. You're pinching off and stuff, but still these radios sound good. And that's where people get away with cranking them wide open because it makes their lower quality power meter show more performance. And they think that that's all they need. But in reality, you're hurting yourself by doing this. You don't sound bad, but it's everything else that you don't see that makes the signal less desirable. Especially for, you know, people that are running adjacent frequencies and stuff close by. They're not going to be too happy because they're going to hear what you're saying. And you don't maybe necessarily know that you're doing that, but it's really something that can be avoided by just doing the right change here by limiting it as much as we can. You know, you can't make it perfect, but it's going to be much better than before. Okay, it's close enough. Yeah, I think somebody might have got in this radio and turned it up even more because that's ridiculously low right there. Usually they come in about 15 or something. So wow, that's why it's that's why it's looking like Frankenstein's head there. Um, let's turn this down some. Let's get it back under control. She's getting hot in the back. You run your radio really hard like that too when you do that kind of stuff. When you over mod it and stuff and you crank it wide open, it's really hard on the radio. It's hard on the on the on the PA, the power making area of the radio. It's really difficult. Okay, we're looking better now. Let me check the TOI here. Let's see where we can get it. I just triggered my scope off because I think that's about as much as I can go. So I'm going to smooth it out a little bit. I don't have my scope set to the slower speed. I kind of like it when it's sped up like that though myself. I, 
grown to kind of like that. So we're going to call it about 17, between 17 and 18 right there, which is a good improvement. It's actually about 23 to 24 when we quote, what if we quote it how the AWRL says to quote it, you add six to that number anyway. So it is just a little bit unbalanced there. So I don't know if that's not going to make a huge difference though. close right, so yeah, it's about the same so that's going to look much better um, you're not going to occupy as much bandwidth there it's nice and round now and stuff like that so let me put a mic on here the radio is it, it's obviously warm but it's not scorching hot or anything I mean these have a massive heat sink it, I think it's actually too big for what it needs I think they could go with a much smaller heat sink on these I mean, I don't run any digital modes or anything. Obviously, with this one, you'd need some other interface to do it. But, um, you know, on the on the new version of this, the, the Pro version, you can run digital modes without an interface. I'm sure in the, at that point, you probably would need to back your power down maybe anyways because it's more duty cycle. But I think they could get away with a much smaller heat sink on the back of these personally. But... I guess having it there is useful. So let me put a mic on here. We'll see what it's doing now. All right, here's our radio. So we're in AM, back on the mid-band. I think we all know where we're at. About eight watts of carrier, just speaking into the factory mic right here. One, two, three, four, five, check, check. Hello, radio. Hello, radio. One, two, three, four, five, check, check, check. Hello. So that's about right. It's not a scorching hot audio radio it's nice and clean and it's gonna sound good you know not balls to the wall or anything like that so here's SSB what is this upper yes yeah upper so on SSB about the same one two three four five CQ 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 hello CQ this is uh, 269 Michigan 269 Michigan CQ CQ hello CQ so there you have it um, an accurate power meter good alignment we're not having these crazy numbers that you know 70 80 90 100 watts it's not practical it doesn't make sense you shouldn't believe that stuff if you see it out of radios like this they just don't do that you know um, you change parts whatever we're doing a good 50 all the time on this radio you could say to make any noticeable difference you have to quadruple that so and that noticeable difference is only another s unit so if you're coming in at a seven you'll come in at an eight with another four times the power so Whatever difference they try to sell you with all the upgrades and all this stuff, it's just really not worth it in the grand scheme. You're better off buying, I don't know, like a a good power meter or something with that, all that money you can spend on all those things that you don't need. So, you know, again, we can uh, look at the spectrum analyzer here. This is sideband, upper side, 20 kilohertz of uh, span. And we can see here where that 0 dBm line is and everything's looking really good. Check 1, 2, check 1, 2, 3. We'll go to AM mode. You can see our carrier right there and then our modulation is right around the 0 dBm at the very edges. Maybe sometimes even below that. So it's working just like it should. So see nothing out of the ordinary there at all. So that's what you should want to see. If, if when you're speaking, when you have your carrier and you're going up all the way across, like now remember this is channel 21 right here, the center of it, and this is 195. If you're spreading all the way across and you're losing power on the channel and you're putting power in the extra channels that you don't want. So it's just a waste of time and effort and money for something that, you know, isn't going to help you except make your power meter do a song and dance. So now I'm going to grab my, uh, move this jumper over to my antenna and we'll see what's going on. Thank 
Can I get the call in again? Uh, you're yeah, just uh, back to uh, almost uh, F1, F1 on my needle, uh, on, my knee, on my needle here. Can I get the call in again? The radio has a little bit of like a, there's a little bit of like a glo um, smoky look. It still has the protective film on the, on the display, so if you see that, that's what that is. You have to get your fingernail up under there and peel that back and it'll, it'll, it'll come off. That's annoying me right there. I gotta switch that. I do not like that. There we go. Oh, I got the mic here. Can I just do that? Yeah. Not much going on up here, but I had the battery, the radio operated by the battery, and I used the MSJ tuner, and I had two mm, about ten foot wires going to her, diff one each going to a different curtain rod, uh, each going to a different curtain rod, and I was working ten meters into Europe there. And, uh, that was hilarious, it, and, and mo most of them didn't believe me there. I'm going to spin my antenna around towards Europe. I'm sorry, is that a say again, say again? Let me turn my uh, antenna back towards him. He's in the Cayman uh, Islands. Uh, let, me, let me take it to the, uh, the November 3, is it CWR? I need that, so I'm going to try to work this guy. He's got a lot of awards. I'm working on it. I got some, <laughs> but I don't have that many. I wish I have two more on the way. The Friendship Award, World Radio Friendship, and uh, another one I can't remember. Okay, John, good to work here, and uh, good job there. N3 QWO in Harrisburg. You're five and seven, John. Over. So we'll try to work him, and then uh, I'm going to get out of here and get this one listed up on the website. And if somebody okay, John, well, thanks for the five. buys it between now and like you, 3 o'clock, it'll ship out day. today. See you later. Zulu Fox at 2 Oscar, Oscar QRZ. November 8, Mexico, Japan, sugar. Whiskey 9, Whiskey 9. Again, we're using a CB antenna. You know it's a beam. It's not really resonating here. Okay, and even though... W9. Even though we have somewhat decent SWR, does not mean that the antenna is very effective here because the antenna is physically way too long for this frequency. So, you know. I think that you lose a lot of the gain, you lose a lot of the directivity. It becomes more like a, almost like an omnidirectional in a way. Maybe not that extreme, but. <clears throat> so we can work them. Well, he's hearing guys in the nines. I'm in the eight states. But if I go to my wire in time, I can barely hear him. So that's the difference. Being up this high, this beam picks up the signal stronger, even though it's not really resonating well at this frequency, but... I'm going to switch it to my horizontal polarization and see. 
November 8, Mexico, Japan, sugar. Um, a lot of people calling right now. So I'm going to go quickly. Kill Oscar for radio. Mike Victor, thank you. You're 5 and 9. Uh, uh, harm and over. You may not have enough juice to get to them. That sometimes happens. 73, uh, QRZ. November 8, Mexico, Japan, sugar. I don't have a foot switch to turn on my HF amp to try to key it or a hand switch or something. I need I would need a switch. I probably would get him if I had that on, but November eight, Mexico, Japan, sugar. Charlie, you're five and nine. Nice to work you. Uh, the new band, Paul. Over. Yeah, Homedale. Is that where Brook, uh, Brookdale Community College is? I'll give it a couple more tries, and then I'm going to call yeah, it what it is and hook up my uh, beach, uh, turn on my uh, HF rig and my amp, and I'll try to get them there. Oscar, Oscar, November 8, Mexico, Japan, Sugar. Uh, Rogers, is it Mark? Uh, you want a lot of singles, Mark. How you doing? What are you up to? All right. Well, that's enough for this one, so we can't make a great contact today on this one, but if I had a better antenna that actually uh, resonated Roger, here... Roger, it probably would work a lot better. Or let's just say, for instance, this antenna was physically shortened so that it would work here. We probably would make it off the radio. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. 73.